Father, we receive your word today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are going to speak to our hearts today. And we look forward to what the Father, what the Father and what Jesus have to say to us today. Through you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Amen means so be it done unto me according to your word. So, it was very important for me, the Lord showed me this morning, it was very important for me to start at a basic entry level with you about personal prayer last night because of where we're going to go this morning. Because... Um, Last night, the Lord was emphasizing, if you remember, praying the scriptures. And he was emphasizing personal prayer, closing the door, not praying to be seen of men, but to go into your most private room, Jesus says, and close the door and then pray to your Father who sees in secret and then he will reward you in the open. So, that is just foundational to pray. Yes. It's private, yes. it's up close and personal, yes. and it's powerful yes. because it's real. Yes. When you pray and your door is closed, that's real. It's face to face with God. It, it is a, a, just an amazing thing that happens every time you do it. I mean, I know it's not different for you than, to, than for me. I know that when you go into your place to sit, what, do you need something, Cindy? Pardon? Lights on. Thanks, Christy. Okay. So, where was I? Face to face. It just happens every time. And it doesn't matter if you do it every day or if you've done it for decades. When you come into your most private room and you close the door, that sense of where you're at in your heart with God and how you're going to actually do this with Him today, it's there. Yes. It's amazing. It's like you've got to navigate and go, all right, you know. And uh, I always find what really helps me when I, to start off, is to begin to just praise Him and give Him thanks. Yes. Yes. Just praise Him and give Him thanks. Just praise Him. I do want to tell you something though, that I do not enter His gates with thanksgiving and praise, because in the New Covenant there are, there's no more outer court. been abolished. I go straight into the Holy of Holies with my prayers and thanksgiving. So I'm not kind of doing this and kind of, you know, coming to your courts and then I come here and there. We have to understand that the blood of Jesus rent the veil and that we have access. We come boldly Amen. to the throne room of grace. So even though in your flesh and your soul you might feel, oh, I'm still out here. You have to know that the outer court has been abolished. Mm -hmm. Hebrews is very clear on that, the book of Hebrews. So when you come with your praise and you come with your thanksgiving, you come straight into the throne room, whether you feel like you're there or yet or not. You're there. You have God's attention when you begin to praise Him. In the book of Hebrews it says, Therefore, through Jesus Christ, offer up to God continually, the sacrifice of praise and the Amplified Bible says, which is the fruit of your lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify His name. Praise is always fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify His name. So you can actually um, develop your praise language. I have developed my praise language to God through the book of Psalms. I've underlined a couple of uh, years ago, probably even about 20 years ago, I started to underline all the I praise you, I thank you, 
uh, parts in the book of Psalms, I did it with one color so that I knew all my blue underlined ones are where I turn to now. Um, I turn to them when I'm coming to praise Him because I wanted to um, expand my praise vocabulary with my understanding. Even though I know that 1 Corinthians 14 also says that I can use my heavenly language to give him thanks and praise him with. I wanted to also um, do this with my, my natural language. So I think I've got it done in my brand new Bible. Uh, yes, I have. I've still got it in blue. Praise and thanks. All right. So. This is what I do. Uh, I, I, I will, my personal prayer time, I have my chair, and uh, I like a very specific chair. And Marion, as you will see, I, I changed chairs <laughs> because I was, that brown chair is so comfortable, but I was like falling all up, you know. <laughs> so I thought I just, you know, so you see, I switched chairs. And because my chair that I sit in is quite important to me that it, that it works for me. You know, and sometimes I move from my chair onto my carpet. Uh, sometimes I sit cross-legged on my bed. But me, mainly it's the right chair. And home I have a wing back. It, 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 it comes to about here. Uh, and it's, it's a wing back. It, it rounds like that. And it's quite low. It's got little um, ball and claw legs, and uh, I've worn them out over the years. I had to have them repadded <laughs> and recovered. They, it's such a comfort. I've got four of them, and I'm kind of. But anyway, they repadded and they recovered now. And so, um, so I will I will uh, begin with praise. And thanksgiving so I'm just giving you a demonstration of you know what does it look like when I pray and I go into my most private room so I'll take a chair my chair okay and then I'll open my Bible like this hallelujah Lord and then I go to my underlined parts here in the morning you hear my voice, O oh Lord. In the morning I prepare a prayer and a sacrifice for, for you and watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. Let all those who take refuge and put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever sing and shout for joy. Father, I'll ever sing and I'll shout for joy because you've made a covering over me. Because I love you and I love your name, I will be joyful in you today and I'll be in high spirits. For you, Lord, will bless me. Okay. I will give to the Lord thanks due to his thanks due to his righteousness and his justice. And I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Oh Lord, I'm just, you know, Psalm 8. I'm just kind of I've got them in blue all throughout the Psalms. Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent. I will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. I will praise you with my whole heart. I will show forth all your marvelous works. I will rejoice in you and be in high spirits. I will sing praise to your name, O oh Most High. Now look, I don't have a great voice. I can keep a tune. But you know, I know that he loves to hear my voice. Because my voice is like my, my thumbprint, my fingerprints. There's no one that has a voice like me. And there's voice recognition going on in heaven all the time, you know? And so, I mean, I have a, 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 my firstborn son who is a, he's a little bit tone deaf. But he doesn't care. Him and I, sometimes we travel in the car and we sing in the spirit together. Oh, yeah, mana no. I will sing to you, Lord. This is what I do. Just so that you see, this is, this is real. This is how I pray in the morning. I love you, Lord. I will sing praise to your name, Most High. 
I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You are my God. You are my King. I love you, Jesus, my Redeemer and my Savior. Normally, my eyes will be closed. Sometimes closed. Sometimes I want. Praise you, Lord. What am I doing? I'm doing the Word. Hebrews says, offer up to God through Jesus continually the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips. And so, I'm increasing my praise vocabulary. I'm expanding it. Then, where's my blue? Some more blue here. I will sing to the Lord. I mean, this is David, because he has dealt bountifully with me. I love you fervently and devotedly, O oh Lord, my strength. Do you know what happens even if you don't love him fervently and devotedly? When you begin to speak these words, you are creating things for yourself. You are becoming what you're saying. You are becoming what you're saying. I love you fervently and devotedly, O oh Lord my God. You are my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my keen and firm strength in whom I will trust. I will trust in you, Lord. Glory to God. I will call upon you, Lord. You are to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. I will shout in triumph at your salvation and victory. And in your name, I will set up banners. How greatly I will rejoice in your salvation. So, actually, you know, I'm only kind of on Psalm 21, so you kind of go there just the way you want to. And that's the wonderful thing about personal prayer. You don't have anyone else to consider. Corporate prayer is very different. When we come together, we consider one another. There's a whole different set of protocol and etiquette when you do corporate prayer. You don't pray everything there is to be prayed about one subject just because you can. You're considerate of other people, so you pray a part that you feel the Holy Spirit's emphasizing, and then you let someone else cover, someone else cover that. You know, we consider one another, but personal prayer. Praise, praise, praise Him, praise Him, worship Him. You know, and then... It's always different because the Holy Spirit will move differently in you, you know, and you'll sense, let me stay here for a while. Let me stay here for a while this morning, you know. And, uh, and then I will begin, I have my, my daily devotions where I, I will then begin to pray for others. I pray, first of all, I pray for my nation. Because God's I never started off doing that. I prayed, first of all, for my husband, because the Lord showed me my husband, my children. But as I, um, uh, through the years, uh, uh, he, he gave me the revelation, first of all, pray from the book of Timothy for those in authority and leaders. So I will bring the leaders of my nation to God, and then I will bring the leader of the ministry to the Lord, you know? And so I'll just begin to um, lift up my nation, lift up. And I haven't actually underlined in my new Amplified the prayers out of the Amplified Bible that David prays for leaders. Powerful, powerful. You know, he says, let not the violent prosper in the land. Uh, seek them out, expose them, Lord. You know, uh, and, and you begin to... to um, Everything that is hidden in this nation will let it be exposed and let it come to the light and be dealt with in the light. Everything that is done in secret, bring it out, Lord, bring it out. Father, thank you. Thank you for putting righteous men and women in positions of responsibility and authority in my nation, Father. Father, in the book of Daniel, chapter 2, it says that you lift up leaders and you put them down. Now, I'm asking you, you know who to lift up. And you know who to put down. You know who to remove in this nation, Lord. I'm not going to be as presumptuous to name them just because I think that. 
But I'm, I'm bringing your word to you, Lord, on this nation. And now I'm going to pray in the Holy Spirit. Because I'm offering a really worthy prayer now. Romans 8, 26. When I don't know what prayer to offer worthily, or how I ought to. Now I've settled it with the scripture. I brought the scripture to him. You put down, you raise up, you bring to nothing. You, you know, you, uh, you want the righteous to be in charge. Uh, so now, I don't know who they are. I don't know how God's going to do it how God's going to do it, but I know that my continual, earnest, effectual prayer, because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, will avail much. God's going to use my prayers to do powerful things. If you study those two words, availeth much, it's full of dunamis and power. So then, Romans 8.26, when it says, when I don't know what prayer to offer worthily, how to pray as I ought. The Holy Spirit meet, goes to meet that supplication on my behalf according to the will of God. That's such a powerful scripture, Romans 8, 26. According to God. Now I know I'm going to hit the jack spot. I'm going to hit the, I'm going to hit the mark. I'm going to hit the bullseye here now. I've hit the bullseye with the scripture. And now I'm going to actually just release the Holy Ghost is going to give me utterance and then I begin to pray for my leaders God will um, increase your prayer life. So don't go on overload when you start off just because you know a sister so-and-so prays for six hours. I wonder about that anyway. You know? But start where you're at and do... You know, it's, it's like anything that you do. You don't start off doing... I'm a, I'm a cycler. But you don't start off cycling for... You know, like the Tour de France guys. That's right. yeah. That's very good. And so what I'm doing is I'm doing the word and it's very powerful. I'm really giving God stuff to work with. My door is closed and he's hearing me. Wow. But you see, when I come into prayer like this, I, I, I do believe I'm not coming into prayer like this because it's a ritualistic thing for me. I'm coming in because I'm believing what the Word says about prayer and what I'm doing is what the Word says I'm doing. My continued, earnest prayer, because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, makes tremendous power available in this area that I'm praying about now. And so this prayer that it says in 1 Timothy about Oh, oh, first of all, above all things, first of all, I wish that you would that, uh, that you would pray for all men in authority. I would that you would pray. That's for every believer. That's for every believer. Isn't that amazing? Because when you start off doing that, you think, I'm sitting here praying for my nation, my president, those that are in authority. Wow. Yeah, because God requires your prayers. God cannot move in the earth without our asking and our praying. Our praying. He works with his sons on the earth. It's God and sons. That's his pattern. That's his way. And then I'll shift from there. And I'll say, now, Father, and I'll pray now for my pastor. I pray for the leaders in our church. And then I have some scriptures there. Ephesians 1, remember I showed you. Father, I pray that you would give to them. Give to them a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of their heart be flooded with light so that they can know the hope to which you have called them. 
Then I pray Colossians chapter 1. Father, fill these leaders with the full knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom and in understanding and discernment of all spiritual things so that they can live and walk and conduct themselves in a manner worthy of you, fully pleasing to you, desiring to please you in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in the knowledge of you. And in the Paul's prayer in Ephesians 3, Father, I pray that they may be strengthened with might in the inner man yes. by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling their innermost being. May they be rooted deep in and founded securely on love. That they may have the power to grasp together with all the saints what is the length and breadth and height and depth of that love. May they come to know practically through experience for themselves the love of Christ which for surpasses mere knowledge without experience. May they be filled through all their being unto all the fullness of God. May they have the richest measure of the divine presence and become bodies holy, flooded, and filled with God himself. Now, you know, these prayers are so inspiring. Decades later, I'm still praying these prayers for leaders. I don't pray all of them all the time. You know, but I'm kind of navigating with the Holy Spirit, and he'll say, Oh, yeah, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And then I'll go, yeah, spirit of wisdom and revelation for the leaders, Lord. I embellish with my heavenly language now. I embellish on that prayer. Spiritual embellishment. Because it goes much further than my understanding. You see, when I pray in the Holy Ghost, 1 Corinthians 14 says, I speak to God mysteries in the Spirit and things that are not obvious to my understanding. Because my understanding is finite. And it's only partially renewed. It's still being renewed by the Word of God. But I don't want to be limited by my understanding, so I bypass my understanding. So I pray with my understanding that which I know from Scripture. And then when I, I want to go, just bypass, gru, basa, that's what I do. I just change gears. And I know the Holy Spirit's giving me utterance, and I know. Everything that I'm speaking is coming out of me and it's reverberating and resounding and doing what it's supposed to do. It's pure speech. I send forth his word, his scripture that I know, and then what do you think's coming out of my mouth now when the Holy Ghost is giving me utterance? Some more. Some more truth. And the devil doesn't like you to switch gears like that. So he'll tell you what you're doing, gibberish, gibberish, gibberish. Oh, grand with their breath said again. So then you might quote the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 14 to him. My spirit prayer. He that prays in an unknown tongue speaks not to man, he speaks to God. I speak to God, I speak to God. My spirit speaks, my spirit speaks. Finishing clock. The word's my final authority. Uh, the Lord said to me that uh, the enemy has been very successful in the church at large in minimizing and marginalizing the power of praying in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But there is a new sound coming now. And there is a new fresh activation coming now to the body of Christ and they're going to find their voice like never before. Because every one of you have been giving, given a voice, a voice box, that is uniquely your own. And there is voice recognition in the realm of the spirit and in the throne room. Let me tell you, actually, whether you realize it or not, all your praying is happening in the throne room. Because you are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. So you pray from there whether you know it or not. You are praying. That is where you are seated. You are praying from that position. 
of being seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. I know your mind may be boggling at this right now, but I am speaking to your spirit. Your spirit knows what I am saying. And your mind will catch up with it. The Holy Spirit will help you. All of the activity with prayer is ha happens in the throne room. Okay, the Lord wants me to show you that. things I don't like about a new Bible. I wear my last one out and then I start the new one and it doesn't fall up in there. <laughs> and it's not under the line there yet. Why did I bring this one to America? said, I am going to prepare a place for you. I am going to go to my Father to prepare a dwelling place for you. He wasn't talking about a house, a physical house, though I have no doubt. Why ever could he not and would he not do that as well? But that word I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am you may come is the same word that Jesus uses, abide in me, dwell, dwell, dwell with me. So what Jesus was saying, I am going to make a dwelling place in the spirit for you with my blood in the holies and it's your place. And where I am you can come anytime. How do I go there? By the Holy Spirit. It's not a weird thing. It's a knowing that when I go into my most private room and I shut the door, I'm coming boldly into his throne room. And I'm here now. And here I pray. And here I say. And it's a precious time. Glory to God. So, Revelation chapter 8 says, And when the Lamb broke open the seventh seal, there was silence for about half an hour in heaven, and I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood over the altar, and he had a golden censer, and he was given very much incense that he might mingle it with the prayers of all the people of God upon the golden altar before the throne. Where are our prayers, people of God? Where's that other one, Christy? I thought it was Revelation 4, where it talks about the 24 old elders that are holding the bowls, the golden bowls, Hmm. I'll find it. Get it for me, Christy. Because there's two confirming scriptures in the book of Revelation to confirm to you that your prayers are heard in the throne room. Sorry, I can't see. I'm sitting here now. I do like to see everybody. So our throne, uh, all of our praying is in the throne room and it goes into the bowls in the throne room. Everything happens in the throne room. There's not more than one throne room in heaven. God doesn't move around. He has a throne. He sits on his throne. It's a very 
oh, the book of Daniel, I saw that last year. He has a, his, his chair that he sits in has wheels. I said, God? In the book of Daniel, it says it has wheels that has fire. Because I have a chair in my study that I study on my desk and it spins around, it's got wheels. I said, wow, God. I always saw this throne, you know, and like a medieval kind of thing. But in the book of Daniel, it describes his throne. It's got wheels. He sits in it. I thought, what do you do with the wheels? you like to move around like me? Because I do that every now and again. I'm studying, 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 and then I spin myself on my chair just to clear my head a bit. In the book of Daniel, the scribes, his throne. Wheels with fire on the wheels. So, in the throne room, there are other thrones as well. The elders, 24 elders, also have their thrones there. It's a room, it's like a war room, war council. It's a place where decisions are made, where prayers are heard. And the angels are continually working with our prayers that are filling. Did you find it, Christy? Five. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Five, eight. Look here. Come, come. Come see what, where your prayers go and what your prayers are doing. Well, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders prostrated themselves before the Lamb, and each was holding a harp. My Bible says a lute or a guitar. So there's music going on in the throne room. It's a, 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 a place full of activity, full of noise and sound. So much sound. I mean, the creatures are going, holy, holy, holy. My prayers are there. I'm there when I come boldly to the throne. Because the blood of Jesus, there's no more outer court people. I go straight in. How do I go in by faith? Because I believe what the Bible says. Yes. 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 Uh -huh. Don't listen to the devil telling me I'm not worthy to be there. Not anymore. I, 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 really, de I really defeated him on that score. Doesn't matter what I've done, I come boldly to the throne room. Because the blood of Jesus has dealt with all my past, present, and future sin. He can't stop me ever from coming in. Amen. I'll just go in <clears throat> boldly. Because I go in by the blood with the Holy Spirit. And by faith, because I believe what the Bible says about my praying. It's that simple. So here we have it. Look at this. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders, with a harp and a lute, a guitar. And they had golden bowls full of incense, which are the praise of God's people. They are the praise of God's people in these golden bowls. God, I want to see. What do these bowls look like? My prayers are in there. This is truth. This Bible is truth, people. Wow. So when I'm praying like this, because I know what the Word says about my prayers, you can imagine my faith is sky high. Because faith comes by hearing the Word about prayer. Faith for prayer comes by hearing the word for prayer. Faith for healing comes by hearing the word for healing. Faith for prosperity comes by hearing the word for prosperity. Faith for anything comes by hearing the word for that. But now we're talking about prayer. 
there's no demon. When you believe like this about prayer, there's no demon on earth. There's no person that can stop you from going into the throne and being powerful with God and for God. And another thing the Lord showed me about prayer, he said to me, Sharon, even though you pray to me in the name of Jesus, you never pray alone, you always pray with me too. Because the Holy Spirit is God. And you always pray with the Holy Spirit. He's always giving you the utterance. Whether he's inspiring your understanding, bringing a scripture to your remembrance to pray. He's firing you. He's inspiring you to pray. He's helping you to pray. And then when you switch over to the Holy Ghost, into that other gear, he's giving you the utterance. That's why the Lord said to me, greatly minimized and marginalized. And you know what? What religion has made pray to be? Ritual. No, 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 no. Telling you, I know what God's going to do in your life because you're hearing this today. You've got the wool pulled off your eyes now Amen. concerning prayer. Amen. Because we are the sheep of God. We are all his sheep. Amen. And he said to me, I'm going to pull the wool off your eyes. We've had the wool pulled over our eyes. That's right. And I'm going to pull it off. And you're going to see where to go in prayer. You're going to go to green pastures in prayer now. Because God said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. He didn't say my house shall be a house to win souls. He didn't even say my house, yes, we are called the household of faith. But Jesus was very emphatic, and God, in the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, you have made it a den of thieves. You have robbed God of being able to answer prayer. And you have yourself been robbed by the enemy who comes to steal, 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 steal your money, steal your covenant rights, steal your prosperity, steal your health, steal pray from your love. Still, still, still. Because this is how everything comes. I go into my most private room and I close the door and I go be powerful with God where no one sees. Wow, oh, Marian. I mean, I'm overwhelmed at the power in the simplicity Overwhelmed. No more will the devil ever lie to you or bring religious stuff on you. Hallelujah. And Today, the word sets you free. Yes. You shall know the truth, and it shall set you free in your prayer life. Yes. enemy will never be able to lie to you again after today. It's impossible. You have been so enlightened by God today about private personal prayer. Personal powerful prayer. You are being enlightened under such a heavy anointing. Because he's calling you to himself to be up close and personal with him. It's what you were born again for. Hallelujah. Thank you.
you. See, so sorry, Mark. I must learn how to dab my tears with a smile. Just like this, he wanted me to demonstrate to you. You just sit in a chair and you go in your room. You have your Bible. <laughs> Glory to God. So he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, and I will make you joyful in my house of prayer. Why? And see the answer prayer, answer prayer, answer prayer, answer prayer. Answer prayer, answer prayer. I will make you joyful in my house of prayer. Now, as I teach in my churches in South Africa, in the churches in South Africa, this house of prayer, is a very holy, heavy-weighted thing. It is not a few people getting together to pray. This house of prayer is like a house of parliament, house of commons, house of lords, house of, house of. We're not talking about a few people getting together to pray. Hmm. He wants me to go there. Jesus said, I will build my church, my ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That word church, ecclesia, is God's called out ones it's a legitimate assembly that legislates on behalf of God. That is why when you are illegitimate and you are under illegitimate authority, it's as if the heavens are brass. You see, Jesus said, I will build my ecclesia. And where I build, where I build, not where man builds, where I build, there people are going to legislate on my behalf. They will legislate for their personal lives powerfully. And then they will legislate corporately powerfully. And then the gates of hell will not prevail against them. So what does a legitimate assembly look like? It is where a man was sent. He never just went. It is a work that was birthed in the heart of God in a specific geographic location. And there are legitimate places of God all over the earth. But there are also illegitimate places where men and women went and they were not sent. Not by God. And John Bevere says in his book, Undercover, and he's quoting Watchman Nee on spiritual authority, says, you do not want to take your family and your life where there is illegitimate authority and God did not send that man there. 
He did not place them there. They may even have had hands laid on them. They may even be preaching the truth of God's word. But if God did not send them there, that's why God is so clear in Deuteronomy chapter 12 when he says, now you're going into your promised land. Now I'm preparing you for your promised land. Now when you go into your promised land, there you shall seek the place which the Lord your God shall choose to place his presence. And there you shall go, and there you shall eat, and there you shall bring, and there you shall rejoice, you and your whole household. And then God says about the house that Solomon built, and my ears and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually, and my ears shall be attentive to prayers made in that place. over the world because I've, I've been in the church as I said I was born again when I was five years old in my father's church he was um, a pastor my mom and dad I was conceived when they were at Bible school in, their, in his womb in, in my mom's womb and um, my father was a pastor in the AFM church which is my roots my heritage is John G. Lake I'm married to a husband whose parents were pastors and his roots are assemblies of God and God brought, married the two. I've seen some things in the church. I served faithfully in my church for 19 years and my pastor blessed us out, witnessed with the spirit that we were supposed to be divinely connected with Dr. Jerry Savell. Heritage of Faith that Dr. Jerry Savell runs is now Heritage of Faith in, in South Africa. Heritage of Faith Bible School. Brother Jerry is the Chancellor. We are divinely connected. We are in covenant. When I was serving in my church, we had some things go awry. And the Lord said, don't ask why. And I heard with my own ears, leaders in the body of Christ saying, all the rich people are leaving that church. I'm moving into start one. Starting a church there. A house of prayer. Legitimate. You go read Jeremiah 23 and you see God said, They went and I did not send them. And they are learning the phrases of the true prophets. So they can keep the people there. But this is the time of God. And God is moving by His Spirit. And what God is going to do with the illegitimate houses is his business. But he's going to move in such power through legitimate houses that the differentiation in the difference will be seen very clearly. And God's people will know where to go. You see, that's one of the reasons David was a man after God's own heart, because David said, the, prayer, the house is for the Lord and not for the people. The house is for the Lord. 
But then in that legitimate house, the Lord says, it's for my people, it's for my people, it's for my people. And then when we say, no, Lord, it's for you, it's for you, it's for you. And he goes, no, it's for you, it's for you, it's for you. And I go, no, it's for you, it's for you, it's for you. And we'll never win that argument with God because it's for us. Because in legitimate houses, we are so set free by the truth. Because God's presence resides there, and His anointing resides there, and the truth can set the people free. is the parallel scripture in the New Testament? Well, I don't have it exactly, but you, you've heard it before. It says that God sets you into the body as He sees fit. And one of the things that God is preparing the people for the promised land, saying, you can't do what you do here in the wilderness, every man doing what seems right in his own eyes. And the Lord showed me, people go to places of worship and houses for their comfort, their preference, and their convenience. They do not seek the Lord. Way to go. They're light and they're loose about it and everything in your life will just be light and loose. There are some majors with God. He doesn't pick on you, pick on your faults all the time. But this thing of seeking the place and being in the place and staying in the place is a big is a biggie with God. It's a major for your life, your family's life, for your development and for your growth and for your praise. Yes. So this house of prayer, I mean you know, like I was sharing last night, bunches of women have got taken hold of this and they think they can get together and be intercessors. And they're not even, things are not even right at home. Things are, they're not even, they're not even planted and they're not even, they're not even in a house where, where there's a spiritual leader. They're not even under authority, but they pray for the leisure. See, that's what um, Miles Monroe says about women. He says, God's created them to be such powerful spiritual beings, he had to put them under authority. Because we really, when we're under authority, we're a very powerful part of God. We really are. Men are not a more, we are not more powerful than men, but we are different powerful. And the two spirit being blends are what actually get the job done for your own personal life and for the body of Christ, you see. Because when God created man, he breathed who he was into one body. So he couldn't make a female and breathe that in again because he would breathe male and female back into that body too. So male and female is in God. So what he did is he put the man to sleep and took a part out. He took the womb man part out, the womb part out. Okay, now, that's a perfect. Now they're there for each other. So that womb man part is that part of God. And God will use woman in the womb part of God to bring forth things. 
you know. And so the devil really has done a work on women to make them very flaky, wanting their own ministries and their calling and, you know. When really, if you're doing things in God's order, that husband is everything to you. seen women in my years of being with God go off half cocked dangerous my husband doesn't understand my calling mm. I'm so cold and so annoyed mm. no what he doesn't understand is why you don't love him He doesn't taste Jesus when you're around him. Why are you not manifesting Jesus? So he's so put off. He's so put off your God and your church. He's so put off. Because we are the sweet. Was really, really very difficult woman when God began to show me these things. It changed me, it began to change me. And what I wanted more than anything for my husband to think that I was amazing. It didn't matter what anybody else thought, I wanted him to think I was amazing. Amazing in the way I loved him and ministered to him and served him and just was unselfish, you know. I, I read a story once, and I never kept it. It was in a magazine. I always regret that I didn't keep it. But it was a story in a secular magazine about a woman in the in the um, one of the Muslim countries, and um, you know they have arranged marriages. And um, thank you. Arranged marriages. And so her husband died, and so they arranged another husband for her. And this guy was really boorish and just so different to her first husband, smelly and dirty and couldn't, I mean, so uncouth and just, and she served him the way she served her first husband. He transformed. The community saw his transformation to the point where they put it in a secular magazine. And the Lord said to me, you see, she doesn't even know me, but she served him faithfully, day in and day out. He began to wash, he began to bath. He was known by all in the community. He began to put on better clothes. He began to treat her better because of how she was treating him. And isn't that what Abigail did with David? She spoke to the king in him, even when the fool was speaking. The fool, David, was going, oh, I'm going to kill Nabal, get him, bam, bam, bam. She was like, that's not who you are. You're, you're much more than that. Oh, you, let me tell you who you are. Let me treat you like who you are. And he said, God bless you for coming to stop me from doing this foolish thing today. She spoke to the king in him, even when the fool was speaking. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 
So now, you can't do that in your own strength. And you can't do that in your natural man. You, you can't do that if you're spiritually dwarfed. Hmm. It's only the spiritual man and the spiritual woman that can flow in this spiritual thing. Thanks, Christy. Second Timothy, this is the Amplified Bible again, 3 verses 6 to 7. Um, I know that there are men here today, but and I know that you're getting a lot of our prayer, so you won't mind me if I just go a little bit with a woman here again. 2 Timothy 3, 6 and 7 in the Amplified Bible says, For among these women are those for among these are those who worm their way into homes and captivate silly, weak-natured and spiritually dwarfed women. Spiritually dwarfed woman. Weak, natured, silly. Silly, weak, spiritually dwarfed woman. Loaded down, easily swayed led away by various desires and seductive impulses. These weak women will listen to anybody who will teach them. I surf the web. These weak women will listen to anybody who will teach them. But me, my feet must stay in the house of the Lord and be taught by my leader and my rightful spiritual authority. And I must listen to the messages there. No, I'm God. Everybody teaches me. I remember I had a friend once. She left me very quickly. I didn't leave her. But I realized afterwards why, because she said to me, I'm open to everything. I thought you. That's it. That, I see. I see. I see. Yes, you are. Now I know. Now I know. These weak women, spiritually dwarfed women, will listen to anybody who will teach them. They are forever inquiring and getting information. demonstrated to hear you here this morning is how you do not be spiritually dwarfed because you know what his word says you come with the word and you come praying to God that's how you prevent spiritual dwarfedness and you go to the house of the Lord you find the place and there you come and there you eat you eat you eat in the house of the Lord. You don't let everybody teach you. But I know that that man's anointed. It's obvious God sent him. I'm eating there. You know what? That man over there has got the word of God for the redemptive purposes for that house. If you eat that, it'll make you sick in your house. 
even though it is the anointed truth of God. God's planted that man in that place there for their peculiar redemptive purposes. Their own unique corporate redemptive purposes of what they're supposed to do. They've got different spiritual DNA designed by God, coded by God. If God wanted you there, He would have planted you there. And then you bring that into your house and say, well, why aren't you teaching this? Why aren't we doing what they're doing? I'm not a copycat. I follow the Spirit of God. I do not copy the phrases of the prophets so that I can make you happy and keep you here. We will speak the things of God in this house for this house for its own redemptive purposes. That's why God says you bring your time to his storehouse, there where God's placed you so that you can eat meat there. You can drink milk there. You can eat meat there. Like I shared with you, the Lord said to me, there's more than enough. There's too much already in your own house. If you're listening to everything, the, the, the message that comes on a Sunday morning, and then perhaps there's a Sunday night message that comes, and perhaps there's, and Pastor Jim and Pat have brought me here. They invited me here. If you just listen to a quarter of one of my CDs, it's already too much for you. And we flit and we flip from one thing to another, to another, to another, and we never allow just that word just to take root and be fruit. So no, I don't know what other prophets are saying, except those that I am divinely connected to. I don't want to know. I'm not supposed to know. That's not where I've been grafted in. And I don't want you bringing those things to me. the Lord girl, my house of the Lord. I have my man of God there. And I've actually just got too much. I'm already in a glut. Absorbing to the best of my ability everything God is saying and just trusting that it's going into my spirit and he'll bring it up when he can, just where I am with my divine connections in my house. Isn't this wonderful? There'll be such peace in your life. There's such peace in your life when your feet stay in the house of the Lord and you listen to what the messages of God that come from there. You feed there, you drink the milk, you eat the meat. The enemy will make you try and feel like you're missing out on something because God's doing so many wonderful things all over the world. It's not where he planted me. It's not where he set me in. Now you're going to be able to help other people and set them free too and say, oh no, no I haven't read that, no I haven't listened to that because I'm still on Pastor Jim's Sunday morning thing. I've been chewing on that thing all week. Mm -hmm. All month. 
And you remember Pastor Sharon, they invited, that thing about prayer, I'm still chewing on that. Because they invited her there to bring this to their people. And that thing about miracles that Pastor Sharon shared on Sunday morning, that God was going to do a series and a succession of miracles, not the New Testament only kind of miracles, but the miracles that God spoke about when he got people out of bondage, out of Egypt. I'm still chewing on that. I'm still believing God and I'm experiencing these miracles. I can't listen to that man of God. Don't give me that book about Israel and Ra and Ra, you know. That's not what God's doing here. I said, Lord, I know you are doing wonderful things around the world. And, and I'm not saying I'm cutting myself off from everything, but I am asking you now, and I'm trusting you, to alert my spirit to things outside of the house that I must read and I must get and I must hear. So I'm trusting you. And he's been so faithful with it. And you know, it's always just slipped into everything else that God is doing in my house. It's enhanced. It doesn't cut at cross purposes with what's happening in our, in our house. I mean, you get people that come to your church and then they send emails to everybody in the church with that prophecy. It unsettles everybody. Because it's so different from what God is saying in the house. The prophetic word that he's bringing in the house. And they come and they bring the book in and the book does its circles and everybody's coming. But, um, Pastor, Pastor, You've been preaching this, and, and, and this book that that one has been circulating here, yeah, it's, 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 it's cutting crosswise to what you're ministering. You've been, you've been telling us and reassuring us that when you're born again, even when you're backslidden, you're still born again, and God's married to the backslider, and you, you do not lose your salvation. And, and, but this book, this book says, oh, you can lose your salvation quickly, quickly, quickly. And we've got to go fix it all up. Because one person brings in a bunch of garbage. God frowns on that. Even if there is a church that has some missing doctrine, it's not for you to bring it in there. Upset the pastor, upset all the people. It's for you to pray for the pastor. That's right. Say, Lord, give him, give to him a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Fill him with the full knowledge of your will and all spiritual wisdom. Let his eyes of his understanding be flooded with light. I know my youngest son and daughter-in-law, I mean, they've been in our church for years and years and years, and God took them to another city. We witnessed, we released them, and God planted them in a church that is so different to ours. And God has taught them. I mean, in the beginning few months, they were like, Mom, Dad, oh God, it's so, the food is so different here. We're like, you know, it's so different to what we've grown up with and what we've known. And then we would just minister the word to them. You need to be praying for your pastor. You know, we just train them, we keep encouraging them. You keep going, you take your tithes there, because they were even struggling. We had to give their tithes, you know, because they wanted to still give it to us. We said, no, your tithe goes there. Because that's where you're going to eat. 
And they began to pray for him. And especially my daughter in law, she's an amazing spirit being. You'll meet her one day. Isn't she, Christy? She's an amazing spirit being. She's like, Mom, I began to pray for him. And I said, Lord, this Sunday morning, thank you that one word from him this morning will change my life forever. She said, look, look what he's been saying. Look, look. She says, Mom, I think he's listening to your messages. I think he's got in on your website and listening, downloading, listening to your messages. I said, no, Marcel. You've been praying. Yes. You've been praying for him and look at what God is doing for you. Yes. Mom, he never spoke about prayer at all. Now he's been praying, praying, praying. I think he's, and he's saying what you say. I think he's listening to your messages. No, he's not listening to my messages. <laughs> You've been praying for him and asking God for that sound. Yes. That part of your diet that you've been missing. And God's just been giving it to you. Because you haven't bad-mouthed him. You haven't been offended at him. You haven't judged him in your heart. And um, I went down to visit them and I said, come, I'm going to church, I want to go hear your pastor. Really, mom? Yeah, of course. And I sat there and I was listening with my notepad. Because I'm a sheep. I'm a son of God and I'm a disciple. The fact that I happen to have this other part added on that is to the body of Christ is by the bar. I am primarily a sheep and a son of God and a disciple listening and um, I'm quite vocal you know when my husband preaches and all this and I'm like oh, Amen Hallelujah because God's speaking and there I was with my notebook well my notebook and my son said to me afterwards he said mom I will never be the same in my church again I watched you receive from my pastor. I said, yeah. Didn't you hear what he said? He said, I will never be the same again in my church. So there may be a few sticks. You spit out the sticks and you eat the hay. And how do I know the difference? Well, because this is what I do. I come into my private room and I close the door and I do this with God. So I'm developing my relationship and my listening skills, my hearing skills with the Holy Spirit. And then when I get in the service, I know the Holy Spirit will go, oh, I spit, I spit, I spit, it. okay. Nice, 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 nice. Oh. Spit, out, spit, out. Nice, 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 nice. Oh. That's my responsibility. That's my responsibility. I'm not supposed to get the man of God to hear for me. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. The word of God says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they, they are the sons of God. So my pastor is not leading me spiritually. He's feeding me. He's feeding me. And so every now and again he might have some sticks in there because he's still a work in progress. I don't judge him. I just go Praise the Lord. I will always be a sheep feeding in my father's house even though I have call of God in my life. That is such a by the bow thing for me. This is what I love about my walk with God. 
that I can do this in my private room. And if God has something for me to do significant in the body of Christ, I'll, I'll be pleased to do that for him. But if he doesn't, if I have never seen of men, if I'm always just in the secret place, that is my first and primary passion. It's who I am with God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, he's really been chatting to us this morning, hasn't he? From his heart. From his heart. From his heart. I think we should have a little break now because I need to go into a part of prayer now that is very much just for you your stuff. God wants me to show you how you can create your own Garden of Eden for yourself. Now we're not talking about intercession for other people. We're not talking about prayer for other people. We're talking about prayer just for you, your stuff, your prosperity, your promised land stuff when God said milk, honey, houses, lands. practical stuff wasn't you see all this is in the secret place so you can be rewarded in the open in the physical realm with manifestations you be, will be rewarded in the open in the physical realm with manifestations for other people in your nation with your with your pastor like God Marcel was rewarded with a physical manifestation because she went to the secret place to pray for her pastor she was rewarded in the open now, there's some things just for you that God wants just for you. A house for you. A your stuff. Your dead freeness. Your things that are have got you in bondage. God wants you to pray and say and sound and create for yourself. Like God, like be. So I think we should have a break and then I'm going to finish up with that.